You're listening to We Deep in Media. Hello, and welcome to another episode of Deepen with Christina. I'm your host, Christina Weber, founder and CEO of We Deepen, feminine weapon, and also a certified professional love coach. If you haven't lately, go to wedeepen.com, check out all types of upcoming social and transformational experiences. We have a lot there. If you're, if you're listening to this before August 12th of 2023, you'll see boundless is on the calendar in Austin, Texas. This experience is worth traveling for. We have a Shabari sound healing, uh, performances, dance. We actually just ordered a poll. It's going to happen at a private residence. And uh, there's an intimacy panel discussion that I will be facilitating with the father of biohacking, Dave Asprey, and kink educator, Kimmy Inch. I'm super excited about this experience. The team from Unbound is traveling into Austin, Texas. Also, a portion of the proceeds are going to Feminine Weapon and Precious Little Ladies, which is, um, we're on a mission to eradicate child molestation and child abuse, the cycle of abuse that um, I, you know, what, what, this experience is and part of the conversation today that we're going to be discussing. I see sexuality so distorted out in the world. Um, and when it's distorted, it comes out in all types of just eh, ways when there are spaces for you to go and, um, and feel like we are, we are, we are, you know, if you're listening to this podcast, I hope you're a grown up. I hope you're over the age of 18. This is best. If you're under age 18, go ahead and turn off, maybe even 21, but under the age of 18, turn this off. There are ways that grown ups play. Um, and when we're really in, we, you know, we are birthed, humanity is birthed through sex and to have sexual experiences is what releases life force energy and for sure you can release that energy into a creative project but when you are with other humans and in a part of an experience you feel that level of ecstasy and so you'll see it on the calendar uh, there's mystery temple you know we're going to go into experience today we're not currently carrying it on the we deepen platform but we're going to get into we're going to talk about the trend of adult play parties um, if you are interested in private matchmaking or relationship coaching there at wedeepen.com, you can click on the matchmaking database and submit yourself into it. You'll notice that the questions are very specific because what we're interested in being a part of is um, our connecting growth minded people. So check that out. The questions are very specific to enter into the database. There's a small fee of $25 to have you in there. And I would love the experience to introduce you to the next love, epic love of your life. If you do enjoy this podcast, please do like, subscribe, follow, rate it, give it five stars. It helps more people find it, helps me continue to host it. So yeah, today is going to be another erotic conversation uh, to some extent, and and I've noticed too in the podcast the the most recent episode, Conscious Three Summing, is probably the most popular podcast that I've recorded this far. And today, a friend of mine recently invited me to Kinky Rabbit, and he has been exploring the play party scenes we met through the work of Unbound, and. As I looked at their website of Kinky Rabbit, I became curious. What is this? What's happening there? I asked my friend who has gone a couple of times and he's offered to make this introduction. So Ayel and Alina, thank you for joining me on this episode um, and to have this dialogue and conversation. So you guys are the founders of kinky rabbit uh mm -hmm. maybe we can we start with uh like 
your origin story of specifically let's start that I know I want to get into like how you two met because you got you two are a couple as well. Yeah. Eleven years. Eleven <laughs> years? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And wait, married for how long? I don't even know. Over four years. Not four. Yeah. We actually, we actually, the day that we we actually started, that we went for our first date. That's the day that we moved in together, technically. So. And actually, it was also like the first day we talked about like lifestyle and like sex parties and all those kind of things. Yeah. <laughs> so we right away had an interest in this whole world. Yeah, I met Alina when she had a, a boyfriend. And I was just waiting for him to dissolve, <laughs> to go away. And uh, we, but we we start talking about sex parties, and uh, I had a little bit of experience. I was a little bit wild when I moved to uh, the US about fourteen years ago. So I did my share fair of uh, you know threesomes, orgies, and all this. You know, it's like as a young kid who wants to explore uh, his uh, sexuality. My first threesome was with my brother. Yes, that's also happens. <laughs> so <laughs> my second one was also um, me, him, and, and another friend of mine, uh, a girl. Uh, so yeah, that's how I started. And then when I met Alina, uh, like I said, she had a boyfriend. And then after they separated, we started dating. The first day we just moved in, we we knew that it's it, that's what it is. <laughs> so, date, date, wait, date number one, you move in yeah. together. Ex yeah. Explain that. We went on a date. We went to all kind of places like a bars, a restaurant. We ended up in a strip club. We started kissing. I was like, I was on a different uh, planet. Then we went to her um, to her place, and uh, we had the most amazing sex. And that's it. And she couldn't get rid of me. I just stayed there. It was just like a, it's just like a feeling where you just know. It's yeah. just like. Yeah, yeah, that's it. This is it. <laughs> so I, I just basically I, I didn't went back to my my uh, I had my own place, but I didn't went back. Yeah, so you I just stayed like yes. since then. <laughs> yes. And what city is this? Los Angeles. Yeah. You know, it's interesting. Most most couples after 11 years of being together, sex like there's there's like some stagnation around the sexual connection between the couple. They get bored or. It doesn't seem like that you two have that challenge. No, not at all. No, mm -hmm. we just had an amazing sex. But, um, <laughs> you know, a few day, actually, when was it like? I think like two weeks ago, we went to do a, a facial together. And uh, this girl was asking, not <laughs> like that. Facial, no. <laughs> no. Regular facial. Yeah, we are not very normal people. We don't do those kind of things. So we went to, to do a facial together and uh, she asked us how long are we dating? She thought we are boyfriend and girlfriend because we always, you know, we, we love each other like crazy. After 11 years, I, I love her like I loved her the first from the first moment that we met and it's mutual. So we always... We, we like, we are the best friends. We, we, there's yeah, more than number one. anything be else. Friends. We are best friends and best lovers and mm -hmm. more than married or any title. Mm. Alina, um, so I all had these sexual experiences and was like, I guess, navigating, you know, all of the, the whatever, you know, the threesomes and what was, what did you come into the relationship with him? I was I was a church girl and um right. <laughs> well no, not really. But I, I mean kinda, you know, I used to go to church with my parents and everything. So they're very like religious. Um, but I mean I wasn't as crazy, I would say. I had my experiences here and there, but I was always interested in like kings and nightlife and like different experiences. I'm all about experiences. So like Disneyland is my favorite place. Um that's why, you know, I, I like the whole creation of all kinds of different things. And that's, that's my passion. Yeah. So but you, I don't, so I'm not like, I'm not like crazy, like I'm not a crazy sexual kinkster. Or what would you say? <laughs> I mean, yeah, it depends what's crazy. Well, yeah, that, Everyone's that. crazy is different. You know, if you ask the church yeah. people, we are the most crazy people, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, she's, she's wild when she, she wants to. 
Yeah, but we are like everyone always thinking that we are like the the craziest people on earth, and we're like doing all kind of uh, everyone asking me how, how many times you get slept by uh, by Alina. So and if I'm have, pegging you, yeah, or yeah, if I'm like, the, and I was like, like, you know, we are, <laughs> we are very normal. We have a family. We have a ki- we have a daughter. We have a we, daughter. we have a, we are very normal people that likes to explore sexuality because we love each other. And yeah, and that's basically the essence of what we do. We we basically projecting our love that is so strong towards others. And that's what we are attracting. And we want to, I would say, help others to understand how much, how much you can love each other, even after so many years, even after mm-hmm. 11 years. And mm-hmm. I would say, even if you talk to me in uh, 11 more years from now, we would be exactly the same. And like, especially the events are like very helpful also with like having a spark in the relationship to like, um, to make it more exciting also as well. Yeah. Would you consider yourself like from a, from your relationship structure? Is it monogamish? Is it, are you poly? Are you open? How do you define? We, we don't like titles much. We really we try to not define anything. Uh, we just go with the flow and whatever, you know, feels right at the moment. I mean, we, we obviously, we, we had our, our fair share of playing and enjoying uh, other couples uh, or singles or anything like that. And we, we're pretty open with one another. And we also understand when we go off boundaries Although we don't have specific boundaries, but we feel each other. If mm-hmm. let's say, if I would uh, go, let's say, on, on, at the party, and I I would uh, uh, I don't know, go with another girl, I would know already if Alina would like it or not, because we have this incredible connection of non-talking. Even we don't need to talk to understand and to feel each other. When Alina is sick, I'm sick. When Alina was pregnant, I felt pregnant. <laughs> yeah, I had morning sickness and and crazy things. It's this is such a, a strong connection that every time something happened to her or or any health or mental, I feel exactly the same thing. Mm-hmm. So so we just know we just we just know we don't need to say anything. We don't need to say words. We don't need to say any any specific title because you know it's 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 uh, it's always uh, dynamic. It's always changeable. So, but like we do prefer like experience together. So we don't we don't go like separate with different. Uh, couples, singles, whatever, we prefer to do it together. Yeah. So at events, we, if there's someone we're interested in, we, we both go and then we, yeah. yeah we and it's much, it. and it's much more, much more fun. I mean, I, like I said, I was a single for many years before when I moved to the U S and I was very wild, but I decided that those days are over and I, it just <laughs> doesn't make, it doesn't fulfill you. It's kind of like a dopamine. It's exactly when you buy anything new and it's like, makes you excited for the first few minutes and it's over. But when you do it with your partner, it's, it's kind of like different experience and, and, uh, the feeling and that it lasts much longer. So it's not just a, a rush of a dopamine. Hmm. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> say for me personally, of one of the, uh, you know, I've always wanted to explore my sexuality, but, but it never really felt good for me to do solo. Like I know other, I see other women being able to do that. Uh, but for me, it's like a, when I'm in a connection with somebody and I have that connection with somebody right now, that feels so good to be able to go out and explore sexuality. What would you yep. say in, in the environments that you're uh you're facilitating producing how do you make sure that people feel and and also too is i i i'll i'll I'll, um you know want to ask this question because you can't really make sure somebody is safe because you never know what's happening on the inside of somebody else i kind of when i hear other Mm -hmm. facilitators say this is a safe container and a safe environment like you don't really know what is safe for anybody else to even make that type of statement Mm -hmm. Uh, but when you see that if somebody is currently single, how do you, what's your recommendation as they're navigating the play scene, whether male or female to like, how do they know what, how could they figure out what's safe for themselves? 
Uh, I mean, at our at our club, we first of all we don't allow single guys at all. Uh, the reason is that we found that many guys they don't really understand the dynamic of it, and it's very hard for them to break down their you know social norms of a of you know of being a male dominant. You said our club because of Alina and Alina's uh, uh, creation and her role as the, you know, as the big mama. The big, big mama. <laughs> uh, you know, it's like the... the yes, I'm the, I'm the mother. Asian, and then yeah. that's why I'm so, <laughs> but uh, that's what makes all the, the, the single ladies and even her performers feel very safe in our, in our environment and feel very sexual and also dominant and, and their own, you know, it's basically on their own terms. So, we, we have a lot of single girls coming in a lot. And we always, I always ask them, what, what are you here for? Like, what are you, what are you looking for? And they always tell me that they're looking for a place that they're not going to feel, uh, judged, uh, and they're not going to feel, um, you know, when, when they go, let's say to Hollywood, to a club, a lot of guys are just uh, pre in, in a predatorial, um, you know, aspect. And it's not because the, uh, it, I'm not blaming guys on it. It's because it's their nature. This is their nature, and this is what their their um, the culture is, and uh, and they just don't know how. It's all about communication. It's it's a hundred percent communication. So when they come into a club, they just feel free to try and do whatever they want. They 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 look into expand their their sexuality and their kinks, and they do it in a. And like you said, in, in how do we do it? It's it becoming a safe space. It's because we let the the females at our club lead the the, the thing, and and the, and because we have couples and single ladies, you're not gonna find a male that is uh, very um, uh, dominant or, or you know uh, extremely uh, rude or anything like that. So. so yeah and it's also the wedding like the people that come to our place like to the club they are very like we really make sure that it's like the right the right crowd like that it's the right couples and single girls and like it's the the right environment to to be safe in yeah so that's like number one i would say the wedding of the people yeah that takes us the most time so i can tell you that we have so many applications we are drowning in applications and uh, we usually will approve the ones that are obviously referred from from people that have been in our club because they know they understand the vibration and um and we also if we see any application that we really like uh we call them i call them personally to just to feel them and to feel their energy and i i just have a very good sense of understanding who who, fe who fits our our vibration it doesn't have to be that there are bad people it just don't fit and um so there's a lot of people that we uh we just don't approve no matter who they are and what they're where they're coming from and how money, much money like they, they have, have and everything. some people offer us like oh i pay you this and this much but they just don't fit so we just don't don't have them yeah and uh and um at the parties we always um uh, Kind of, I wouldn't say monitoring, but kind of like checking and feeling the people and see who fits and who don't. So we remove a lot of people from our uh, mailing list after just mm. because they don't fit. And again, it's not because they're bad people It's just, or, or they do something wrong. It's just they don't fit. You know, there's like a very specific uh, energy that we uh, created in our vibration that if someone don't fit, it's just, you know, one 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 vibration can destroy the whole thing. And yeah. so that's why when you said, what, what is a safe space? This is a safe space when we keep continuously checking who is coming to our club. It's like our home. It's, yeah. it's really like our home and our family. We take care of everyone before the party and after the party. So I have a lot of uh, the guests, uh, either it would be single ladies or even couples that just talk to me about their personal life and, and it, uh, you know, anything, anything. It's, it's not just coming to the club and, and I, I don't see them as my customers or anything like that. I see them as really good friends and that's how I treat them all. And that's why I choose them carefully. Yeah. Uh, we both choose them really, really carefully. Uh, so that's how we make everything very um, safe. Uh, as possible and if someone don't feel safe we autom immediately we remove the other person who don't make them feel safe no matter who this person is no matter how big this person is we really don't care mm. if you mm. were to 
define what Kinky Rabbit is and why it exists, how would you share? <laughs> um, it exists to... I mean, it, it started, so like I said, it, start, it, it started uh, when we, we started talking to you, you said you were talking about um, the rise of all kind of, you know, play uh, parties. So I... And again, I see it with my own eyes. We, we've been in this world, let's say, for about 11, 12 years so since we're together as uh, a beginning as, as someone who just participated. And then Alina started working in a, uh, at a, this uh, another club that she uh, for many years. And then we, uh, she created a Kinky Rabbit Club. So I see a lot of it. Um, as uh, first of all, people evolve. That's the first thing. You know, we were, uh, especially me in my culture, we were very constrained to uh, sex is bad and you have to do it when you're married and all this yada yada stuff. And we see it as totally different. And I feel that there is a huge movement. It's kind of like a cycle of life, you know, because it, in ancient Rome, people were so open. Everything was open. Everyone was doing you know, it was Sodom and Gomorrah over there. And I feel that it's getting to it right now, but we added, <laughs> no, it's not because with added, uh, uh, people are getting more open. It's, it, you can see it with, uh, uh, I see all of it with the rise of, of cannabis and psilocybin and all those stuff makes people like more, um, open to all the stuff. It's, it's all connected. And, if we return to what is Kinky Rabbit Club, it's so, like I said, it started as obviously as something as a, as a play party, but it turned out to be such a, a community of like-minded people who, who just enjoy life together and feel, and I would quote one of the new, mem new members that we had uh, at the last party on Saturday, she came to me, they coming all the way from England and she came to me, she told me we, we are 20 years, we're 20 years married and we feel so liberated here. We feel so, we, we in love with each other again. And that's like I said at the beginning, it's exactly what we, uh, it's in our own vision, our own image, because that's what we feel with one another. Uh, when we wake up in the morning, we hug and kiss every, every second. I, I just want to kiss and hug Alina. Mm -hmm. um, and, um, and that's exactly what Kinky Rabbit is. It's to, is, is a community of amazing human beings who just want to explore life and enjoy each other not only sexually it's obviously uh, you know obviously people do have sex and a lot of sex and exploring their kinks but also people create uh, a lot of connection between one another and this is the most important thing because i feel especially today people are so disconnected from one another because of the internet and social media and all the dating sites people don't date anymore. Like, like we used to do, you know, when we just ask a girl out and they missing all this vibe, you know, they just talk to one another on a, on a text message. We never had text messages. We were talking to people on the phone. We were, we feel them. So, so that's what I feel Kinky Rabbit Club is. It's really yeah. a strong community of, of really unique human beings that uh, that have love for one another and and just want to experience and explore in a very um, uh, unique space that they feel very safe in it. They feel the most vulnerable uh, to do whatever they want with no uh, shame, no boundaries, nothing. Just just be themselves, you know. And yeah. and, uh, and and that's exactly what I feel because, like I said, a lot of our a lot of the people who join in our club, they're always telling me, you are the only one I can really talk to. And I can tell you things that I would never be able to tell my normal friends, my vanilla friends, they mm -hmm. call them vanilla. Um, so so that's that's exactly what it is. I, and I know the, the privacy of the people who are members of Kinky Rabbit is, is important to um, keep the confidential. Most. But can you share about like about the types of people who are members and participating in kinky rabbit yeah so the, i mean they're coming from a lot of spectrums of life things that you would never believe um most of them i would say um i would say uh, finance uh entertainment industry if it's uh, you know uh, uh, musicians and uh you know, Hollywood. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's pretty much uh, tech. Of everything. Yeah, tech people, uh, yeah. lawyers. Um, but 
it's uh, it's very very specific people who are um, you know because when they come into a club like you said privacy is very important to us no one allowed to use a phone uh, yeah, we, we phone. take their phones away from two reasons obviously privacy is number one second is just to be uh, present in the moment to connect with others and not to connect with your phone uh, it's like when you go to any uh, restaurant or any any party or anything people are always on the phone so at our club no one is on their phone no matter how busy they are of course they have to be successful because those events are very uh, it's a high uh, production level we don't just and that's actually one of those that i can i can point out there's there's few uh there, I would say two types of uh, play parties. There's one that is uh, the um, you know the old-fashioned uh, swinger parties that you know people just rent a space, uh, put some you know some beds, some a little bit of music. Uh, most of them are bring your own bottle and uh, just people uh, go in there in one purpose to have sex and go home. This is the that's the one thing. Ours is a little bit different. We, um, and especially Alina, want to create an experience for people. Uh, we will call it like a, a long foreplay, something that people would really enjoy before they get into any intimate uh, connection with others. They, they can actually meet other people and, and see an amazing show, an ambience. And it's really like a, 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 the first two, two and a half hours uh, when the event starts, it's full on experience, crazy experience. Uh, last party was the, I think of the first time after a long time, because I'm always busy that I, I was actually watching the show, the main show yeah. at midnight. And, and I told Alina, I, I had this moment of, I, I was on stage next to the, the DJ and I saw all the crowd in front of me and I felt so high of from the energy and the, the the vibration and I saw everyone so happy and loving. I was I, I told myself, did I drink or I, I did I smoked weed or something? I'm I'm so high. But it but that's that's exactly what they're feeling and what we what 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 Alina is creating in her mind is not just like just like the jump into having sex. It's so easy to to do. But when you create any, uh, when you create a, an experience around it and, and people actually come to enjoy things, you know, like, and it's also one thing that is also helps, it helps new people not to jump right in because it's a little bit scary at the beginning for a lot of people. Mm. But when you go to a club and you, when you go to, to Kinky Rabbit and you see the ambience and the shows and the, and the, all the props and the outfits and, and the lights and the music and, and everything that goes around it, it's kind of like ease up you know, everything. And it makes you be more open slowly, slowly to what's, what's about to come. Uh, so, so that's, that's, uh, that's what I, that's the two differences that I see. Mm. And Alina, you are, what I hear is the creative genius behind the production of Kinky Rabbit. Can you well. share <laughs> with me about like what, happens like what are what are these performances and how do you curate them and where does the inspiration come from mm -hmm. I mean it's always depending on the theme and like what my vision is so I always let's say I think like okay in the next event what what do I want to create let's say for example the last one is Bacchanalia and I'm always kind of like researching what was the era what was the costuming what what goes into the whole um the whole vision, everything of it. So I research, I see which kinks fit. And then, um, I basically just create like a, like a show and the whole, something that just fits this era and the theme. I don't know. I'm just going with like the performance and everything. <laughs> and it's, and it comes from all, uh, dimension. It's the, it can be the sense of, you know, sound, light, it's specific light and colors, uh, all the outfits that she creates, the, 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 um, the characters that would be at the party, the smell, the, mm. uh, everything. It's, that also, you can it's more, it's more like, um, basically kind of like casting a movie, I would say, um, you have to make sure like that the characters are the right, that they know how to act because it's a lot about acting for me. Um, it's not just like, I don't, I work with a lot of, um, adult performers, but I also work with some that are just like actors or just regular girls or guys from, everyday life that I just want to like be part of the performance. So I'm creating this whole 
um, this show that like is just magical and like yeah makes people happy and. And there's is there different. auditions? There's auditions and rehearsing. Yeah, um, yeah. So I I do auditions. I do auditions and some are just referrals also like um, they apply online. They say, oh, I would love to perform at Kinky Rabbit. And then um, yeah, I talk to them and I see, I feel them out. And then, yeah, most of the time it's like, it's a great cast yeah. and they do like an amazing job. Yeah. They love it. It's like, it's very, very, um, it's like very different than, for example, for the adult performers, when they, when they do their regular job, they do, they work in the adult. It's, um, they always tell me like, it's, it's so different for them. It's, it's, it's like a type, different type of work. They just, they love performing at Kinky Rabbit. Yeah. Actually I had, uh, one of the newest performer that we had, she's an adult performer and she came to me and she told me it's this is the second person already telling me that that, you know, because she's an adult performer, you know, her life is very monotonic and she don't feel, she don't feel, uh, feminine and sexual again. And she said, mm-hmm. coming to Kinky Rabbit make me feel more sexual again and more alive. And, and she even texted me as she said, I, I feel so amazing being part of your community. And that's, I, I told her, that's the bottom line of, of, of what we are doing it for. We're doing it for all those amazing people that, you know, people watching porn and they think, you know, they, they don't see the, the person behind the, the, the camera and, and how, you know, sometimes, you know, I'm sure there's a lot of suffering going on there, internal suffering. You know, it's not easy to do those kind of things. But with us, Alina, always making sure that everyone feel amazing and they are the stars and, and just make them feel sexual again, which is so important. And, and you can see it in the show as well. And you say that there's kinks, like when you're, when you're theming the show, that what are the kinks of the theme? Can you give some examples of what, how you incorporate kinks and what these kinks may be? I mean, there's like, for example, the last show there was like, I did a orgy slash um, gangbang type of situation where I had like this, um, like those four guys, they were masked. They had like this um, gold, what's the name? Like a Roman type um, mask on. So you didn't really, you didn't see their faces. And they were coming like one after in, after another. And they were like um, having sex with the goddess. And um, while they're having sex, then there was like a bull waiting for her. It was like a minotaur type of character. And then... Um, he at the end came in and then like he basically finished the ritual. It was more like a ritual type of thing where um, he was the, the last one. And then um, another goddess type character came in. She was also totally masked with like a beautiful costume. She came in with a kelp. What's the name? Kelp? Um, like a cup. Yeah. Like a, like a, it's like a golden um, wine cup. And then she came in and she was basically going to each and other, uh, to all the guys and collecting their, their nectar. <laughs> she was collecting their sperm. And then, um, at the end she went to this minotaur and then he, um, he was basically, he came in this cup as well. And at the end he lifted it and then, then he poured it all over her. So basically like she was, enlightened by the, by the sperm of all the performers it was just it's just like all kinds of different situations like there's like foot fetish and like where i have like in the performance like a little bit of that where someone is pleasing her like by like licking her feet or like another one is um it's just so many. I'm just trying to think like what, what else? The, the main idea is that, that we, uh, that uh, that's what Alina always want is to don't make kink that dark. To yeah. make it the opposite to make it much more fun. Yeah. Because you know, kink people happy. are so scared of kinks and, you know, because there's, let's say, for example, when you say kink, you think people think about dungeons and dark dungeons yeah. that are very smelly. And, and it's the energy. Like, I feel like the, yeah, it's like this kink energy where people think, of, oh, it's dark, it's dark and scary in a way. Most, but I'm making, I'm always making the shows more like happy and fun, even if it might be like a dark kink where it comes to like, um, like a scene where the girl gets like penetrated really like hard, like a hardcore scene, but you can still make it in a way where it's like 
still with good energy. So, yeah, I don't know how to explain it, but it's like, I just make it work like that. <laughs> it sounds so sexy and it does sound like great foreplay for somebody who's mm -hmm. coming and hasn't experienced anything like this before, because there is even, you know, kink in general, when you step into that world, there's, there is a, it's, it's, you're stepping into something. It's when something's unknown, there's an, a level of, um, like uncomfortableness to it. Yes. So mm -hmm. as you're stepping into it, you think that like, it's going to be one thing and it's going to be so scary and oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. And then to, to see that there's this performance element and um, yeah. Yeah. That's like, not that scary. It's, it's just very, it's more theatrical. And then it, it gives you the elements of kinks, but it's just not, it's not just this heavy kink, um, dungeon feel, I would say. It's, it's really more like a theatrical performance. Yeah. And when they see all the others around them enjoying it and kind of like appreciating it and, and accepting it, they're, they'll be like, oh, we're not the only one. Because people, what they're afraid of, they're afraid of what the others think about them. That's the number one thing. That's why they're not, no, a lot of people not open too much, you know, because they're always afraid, oh, what's the other going to think about me? But when you come to this uh, place, even as a newbie and you see, wow, there's like 150 people here around me that mm -hmm. actually enjoying what I'm enjoying, but I was always hidden. So I was like, okay, I can also be open and do whatever I want. So, and it's happening in seconds. It's unbelievable how fast it happens. I see uh, people who never ever did anything in their relationship for many years and they are going wild, like after, after an hour which is so beautiful. It's so amazing. You know, we had a few couples that, uh, last, uh, the, the last party that, were, that I know that they are new, that they never, never had any experience, you know, been in a very normal relationship, uh, boring, normal relationship. And, um, and they went so wild and they were so happy and they text me even after how amazing they feel for each other, especially the first time. Wow. That's like, because it is really the energy in the club. You come in, you see the show. Everyone is so like, happy and sexual it's just like you know like it's like infecting you and then you just want to be part of it and yeah. just you just feel free and do your thing like burning man yeah it's really yeah it's like a more a mix of burning man community mixed with uh sexuality <laughs> i love hearing about the couples coming into that experience together because yeah there is a fear of what are people going to think about me but there's also a fear of like what are what is she or he going to do mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's a very big fear are they going to fall in love with somebody else? Are they going to like the other person's body better than they like my body? It's, it happens a lot, but you know, that the, 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 the crazy thing in, and I can tell you from personal experience that it's exactly the opposite, exactly the opposite. The, the love that, that you have for your significant other, when you see them having fun and enjoying and, and be more, the most open is like a hundred times stronger. I mean, Let's be honest, most of the people today, many of the people today uh, are, not, are living in a full lie of, of, uh, of cheating and, and so on. Mm. And of course, this is a different conversation to go into because I'm very deep into learning and understanding why. But the thing is, when you are very open with your partner and you let each one do whatever they want to do and not forcing them your beliefs and your uh uh, you know, your, um, the reality that even makes it much more amazing. And I see the couples that, that we have couples that been together for so many years and they are, they just love each other like crazy. I mean, I, I'm always jealous of them, you know, that, that how they are so, so many years I'm, I'm telling myself, I, I really want to be like them when I, you know, like in the, in the sense of love, you know, people who have, you know, grown up kids and, and they've been through so much in their life, 20, 30 years in relationship and they love each other. Like, like, like they just met like really like, and, and I can tell you that it's, it's across the board, uh, with, uh, with our people, even people who had a lot of problems in the, at the beginning and they came to our 
parties. Yeah, it helped uh, them with the relationship. Completely. Yeah. It doesn't help everyone, of course. You know, it's not like magic. But it's a lot. We yeah. get a lot of messages. A lot. Sure. Like they yeah. tell us like, oh, it's so it like, helped us and we love each other more. And like, it's, it's, it really does something. For yeah, people. it does. Absolutely. Yeah. When you're in this place, when you in this vulnerable place and you kind of like stick together and it makes you feel much stronger yeah. with one another, that's mm-hmm. for sure. If you can go through that, you can go and it's through all, anything. It's all communication. Like you just like have to always talk about it and like, what's okay, what's not. And then like, once you at the party, you like, just look at each other and like, you know, you just have to feel each other. It's like, it's like number one, like you have to know your partner. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Yeah. It's, it's interesting, you know, from, from the infidelity, um, you know, I, I'm very, um, aware of the, breaking of so many couples and so many marriages and a lot of it is around infidelity and cheating and i would love to even eradicate those words completely and uh you know for people to more be in their own sovereignty of their experience but when you gift this to your partner when you invite your partner into this and you explore together i mean you're Mm -hmm. going into that what seemed to be so scary together to come out stronger. And when you're giving, giving the gift of yeah. sexual freedom to your significant other, your relationship has the ability to deepen. And for sure, I can see of like preparing your vessel to come into that world is really important in the self-development work for you as a couple. What would you say, uh, like what, what type of modalities or, you know, have you gone to therapy and coaching or what makes it so you two continue to stay strong with so much temptation all around you? Um, we never went to any, any, any therapy or anything. We just so open with one another that if something bothers us, we just tell each other. And, uh, that's been s- since the, the beginning, uh, when and it's just that we, we just feel so connected to one another. We don't need to even, like I said, we don't even need to talk. We don't need to do anything. We just, the most important thing is just to be open. Just tell what's on your mind. Don't go to sleep when you have some problems. Just say, even if you, even if it's the, the, you know, something that you're really afraid that your significant other will, you know, uh, will know about your, let's say your kinks, your personal kinks or anything, just say it. What do you, what do you have to lose? And if it doesn't fit, then maybe it's not the right path. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. I know that from, from a man, uh, point of view, there is a. Oh, you just went on mute. I think. Can you hear us? Yeah, got you back. Mm-hmm. Uh, from a, from a men point of view, because uh, I talk to a lot of men that that do cheat on their uh, wives, and it's most of it because they uh, they missing something in their uh, relationship. If it's it can be the sexual um, appetite, love, a lot of love, uh, attention. So. It's not that all men are awful and they just go and have sex because they just uh, need it. I mean, of course, there are some people who are uh, sex addict, which is a totally different thing. But a lot of men just need, uh, you know, we are little babies. We need attention. We need attention. We need love. We need sex. Uh, we are very sexual beings. Same as females, by the way, same as women. Women are sexual beings. People don't get it, but they are. They are actually very sexual <laughs> beings. I know a lot of women at our club that are dying for a relationship with an open-minded uh, man. Yeah, and but guys how are crazy yeah. they can't find it. And and one thing that I can tell you that a lot of the um, uh, couples that come into our club, most of the, most of them, the women are very open and want to try, but the men is so scared and, and so afraid of losing ego. it. It's, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's all about ego. What are the yeah, men afraid so, of? Uh, losing uh, control. Um, it's mostly losing and uh, losing their significant other to something. I don't also know. Also, like feeling like, like not a, as like let's say for example that she might like the other guy more. Yeah. Like he may be like a he maybe have a better dick or like yeah, whatever. Yeah, it's it is. true. It's true. So they're afraid that they're not good enough or something. Then yeah. I just recently in the past few years I was study about all the stuff. I I studied. I learned that there's something called um, cam war. 
and it's coming from have you ever heard of the term it's a very no, funny term it's come, it's comes from the uh, from our um ancient times that we were you know like um uh, hunters gatherers uh, you know uh, and uh, protecting our tribes so there is actually a, a kink like that that you know when when a man come in a woman and then her partner is uh, having sex with her while the cum is inside it comes from our ancient times it's it's so uh interesting <laughs> fascinating things but it's but it's exactly like that it's it's kind of like this tribal thing that that you can't let anyone to touch your 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 woman because you you have to protect her you know and uh but you're not protecting her that's the that, that's the thing I have a few uh, uh, couples, the female side, that they're telling me, I really want to explore. I really want to do something with other men. But my men only but allow my men me. don't allow me to. And he wants me to be women. with women. And I was like, wow, poor you. I mean, you are such a, a sexual being who wants to explore life. But it takes time. You know, some, you, know you just yeah. need to let it. You know, it we do notice rest. that, though. I feel like at the beginning, there's a lot of couples that say, oh, we only play with females. Uh, and then like after a while they're coming for like many times they're kind of getting into the next of exploring with guys as well so they need some time to get there i feel like but it's but a hundred percent of it is the ego the yeah. male ego uh, so it just need, male need to men need to go to do some ayahuasca ceremonies to dissolve their ego completely and then <laughs> or to i don't know to do a 5mo to dissolve that completely and then i mean i'm very grateful that i was uh uh, that all my life I was pretty much egoless. So uh, I, for me, the opposite. I want her to enjoy. I want all the other women around me to enjoy and have fun. And I don't see it as a calm war. <laughs> Let's um, call it. A, yeah, but uh, but it's all about fear. You know, it's everything is about fear eventually. And in the ego experience, do you see? I mean, I, I see. I see that there's also men and women, but we seek attention from the opposite sex and we crave that attention to feed our ego. Of course. It's always like that. Of course. We all are. We all want to seek attention. Of course. Mm. That's the most important thing. Yeah. Mm. Everyone wants attention from others, from other people who are not entirely their uh, partners uh, to feed their ego, like you said. It's yeah, but I don't, I don't, like, for example, in the club, I don't feel the ego at all no, no. you don't you don't have that feeling of like oh there's like ego people we don't want that no we if we feel that that's exactly those people that if they come with extreme ego and their uh you know their cultural um uh, you know they're still stuck in their old cultural times of this religious cultural way wherever they came from they just don't fit and they Either they will live by themselves because they really don't fit the vibe and they feel very uh, secluded, or we're just gonna remove them because they just the, the vibration is not right. So yeah, it's true. We we don't have uh, that many, and and but we do have some that just want to uh, uh, evolve and to and you know and to turn into something that they really want to be. And um, those are the most beautiful uh, things that we see actually. Like how people evolve and change. In, in, you know what? It's not in the, even in the. I feel that if they evolving in the sexual aspect of it, because it's so vulnerable, because it's so you're naked, you're naked in front of other people, with your partner. You you can you let's say you are um, uh, exhibitionist. You're having sex in front of others. That's very very rough. You know, it's not easy to do something like that. And and it's always uh, helping them in other aspects of their life uh, to resolve all their you know their uh, inner problems, their ego, their problems, and and their shame and all that one. So so it's really and I, and I t I see it all the time and I hear it from a lot of couples and single ladies how they evolve in uh, through sexuality. Uh, you know I like to call it sex uh, sex transmutation. They break everything down and and start all over again and becoming a much better version of themselves and their partners yeah i feel like we have most like most strongest couples in the club like, yeah. they're very very strong like yeah, it's really great to see that <laughs> i remember so the, the very first play party i went to i was one of the single women mm -hmm. and Arriving, I didn't know that the men until until I was there present. I I saw it because it was small. It was 
maybe 20 of us. Mm -hmm. And the men had to have a woman with them. So they had to be in a couple. And then there was probably about, you know, because it was small and intimate, there might have been four of us single women. And that experience was confusing to me at first because I grew up where you don't hit on like you don't show interest in someone yeah. else's boyfriend. <laughs> like that's n no good. So it was, it was confusing for my brain um, to be in that experience. Cause I could even see, you know, when, when people come to this party, it's not that they're required to be in a committed relationship for X amount of time. They have to bring another woman with them. Mm -hmm. And then now there's these other free flowing women in this space how, how do you, how do you recommend that the mind reconciles this, you know, growing up with don't, don't hit on someone else's boyfriend to now being in this open experience? I mean, so from, from I would the, say talk to the woman first. <laughs> I mean, from the couple's uh, point of view, uh, I always tell all the guys, I always tell them, let the woman lead, let her be uh, comfortable let your partner be comfortable. Um, and you know, as much as it, it, obviously it's tempting because there's so many beautiful women's, uh, let's say at, at our club, so many beautiful single ladies that, you know, that just want, you know, uh, attention and love and, and play and have fun and enjoy, which is great, which is obviously it's feeding the ego and, and it makes you feel so amazing. But First, let your partner lead the way. Let her feel comfortable. When she feels comfortable, you would get so much out of it. And and that's, that's I think, and I always keep telling it to everyone, uh, uh, you know, as much as it's hard for you and, and your dick is, is on fire and uh, you just want to conquer the, all the women's, take it easy, let, uh, let, her, let her run the show because it's really worth it. It's really worth it. And that's, that's what we do. That's what we do. And that's what majority of the couples do. And if I feel that, that in, in, uh, any of the couples, I see the male is very dominant and just want to, uh, you know, just want to, uh, let's call it score others. It's really not what we're looking for. And we're just removing that person. So on the, on the couple sides, just let her do what, let, let her roll, let her feel the vibe, let her feel the energy of the other, uh, person, especially women to women. You know, women's women are like, like cats, you know, they, they, yeah, it's like there, there is some sort of energy. Yeah. There's some sort of energy that, that, you know, if, 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 uh, if Alina would feel that someone want me for more than just fun, she would know it and she would feel it. Obviously there is, women have a very high intention, uh, uh, intuition, very high intuition, much more than men have. Um, so if she would feel it, she would tell me right away. And eh, no, this one is no, no. Um, so yeah, you need to listen and say, okay, no problem. There's so many out there. There's but so you, many you know it also like when there is this a specific woman, like you feel it and I feel it. So then we know both. Like it's just, yeah. Yeah. You just feel it. I mean, that, but that's after many years. If it's, yeah. if it's at the beginning, you just need to just to listen, you know, the listen and, and feel the energy of the other person. And if you feel that they don't feel comfortable in that situation, you just stop. And mm, there's so many, so many opportunities. So many, think about, it, we have 150 people at our, at our club. We don't, we don't allow more than that. We have about, I would say 60 couples and the rest will be ladies. Let's say 30 to 40 ladies, more or less, you know, 150, 160 people. So there's so many, so many out there, so much going on. And so if one doesn't fit, you can go to the other, you know, and there's so much happening and uh, yeah, just, just, it's again, it's communication. It's such an important thing mm. just to communicate with one another and to not even with words, just feelings, you know, mm. be open with your feelings and your heart and you'll feel it all. You mentioned during this conversation, you know, we've talked about sex and you've mentioned love a few times as well. What's the difference? Is there a difference of sex and love? Oh, of course, a lot. <laughs> when I have sex with my wife, it's from love. It's from just want to feel her, her energy. Um, when you have sex with someone else, when there's no, just to have sex, it's kind of like, yeah, I mean, for me, it's, it's a waste of, of my sperm. I have to say it's a waste of energy. It's like, you know, when we, when we were young and, uh, and our, and we just wanted to have sex as much as possible it doesn't make any sense, you know, to waste your energy and the other person energy. For me, 
uh, personally, it's the it's the com- it's the connection between us. It's kind of the, the the flow of energy between one another, and that's what well, that's what I do. I, I don't want to have sex with any girl that I see. I want to have this connection with this person, either if it's my partner or, or any other. I, I want to have something more than just sex. Like I don't know how to explain it, but it's kind of like a feeling, you know, when you when you enter uh, to a room and you ha- and you see a lot of people at a party. And some people you connect with them right away and some you don't. So those people that you connect with them right away, you can call them, you know, you, they can be your, your, your soul fabric or whatever you want to call it. It's just that you feel this energy of them and you want to be close to them and feel their vibration with you. So but you don't love them really. No, 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 no. <laughs> but it's still, but it's still, I mean, there's all kind of love. There's a love that I have for my daughter and there's a love that I have for my wife. It's totally different love. There's a love that I have for my parents and my brothers uh, they're, yeah, they're totally is, different love connection though like it, it's, it's, all about, it's all about connection and, and of course there's different between love and sex sex is very um can be very monotonic can be very uh just to animalistic. yeah very mm-hmm. exactly very animalistic in a way just to conquer and and spread your sperm to you know to kind of like when a dog pee uh, you know to mark his territory uh, at, at least again, from the main point of view. And there is other that you really, uh, in Hebrew, there's such a nice word to it. Uh, that I cannot say it in English. There's no word for it in English, but there's, there's, there is sex and there is something else. Uh, I kind of like to make love. It, it, it's more, it, it's very similar to make love. It's a much nicer word. Uh, so, so I feel that there is, of course, there's uh, the energy and uh, it's very different. And what you put in out there is very different. Mm. The attention, the, the attention, the, the intention that you put into it. It's the same as when you go to ayahuasca, when you have a clear intention, you get so much out of it when you just go there to just uh, explore with anything, by the way, with anything that you do in life. Mm. If someone was to come to a kinky rabbit or even explore another type of play party, how would you recommend that they prepare and that they care for themselves after the experience as well? Um, I think they need to first talk about it a lot and see that if it fits to each other. Yeah. But like, remember, like when we did it first time, we also, we talked about it, but then like everything we talked about didn't really like make sense. Yeah, so, that's true. But you still, we, we had, we had a lot of conversations about it. So <laughs> what Alina is saying that we, we, uh, we had a lot of rules that we broke them right after the first minute. So really? yeah, yeah, of course mm-hmm. we said uh, the first time we went to this party, we said no kissing others. Two minutes after, two minutes. It was like okay. But the first thing was kissing someone. Yeah. <laughs> so it was uh, it was uh, so funny. So of course <laughs> rules doesn't apply. Yeah. Uh, but at least you know be honest and say you know be honest and and just go with the flow. You know I, I don't like to be prepared to anything. You know like uh, in advance. There's no right. I mean or wrong. I would say main rules. You should have main rules. Let's say for example, okay, you cannot just disappear with someone. Yeah, and yeah, like, yeah, of course. Uh, I don't know what's up. So that's maybe something. Yeah, like but main rules like that but other things like little things like kissing and maybe low jokes and i mean i don't know like maybe not no sex at the first time i don't know if you can even say that no no i just say like there's no like i said there's no written rules no one is coming like to test you after after anything there's no god will not going to come and tell you oh you did this wrong you did this wrong oh my god you get a fail just go with the flow, enjoy, go with be the together. together. Yeah. The, like yeah. you both have to like always communicate by like looking at each other and like, is this okay or not? If like one of you feel like, oh, I'm not sure if I'm feeling it, I would be like, okay, let's get out of this situation. Yeah. You know. But, and same goes for after. So when after the event, you you just be open and say, you know, how was it, and and you know, like what you liked and. It happens no matter what, because if you really enjoy it and you had the most amazing experience, you gonna, I mean, okay. I can tell you for me after our first ever experience, I used to uh, uh, have an office in downtown in LA and uh, it was like an hour driving from home. I used to call her and I was still, I'm I'm leaving work in the middle because I really want to have sex with you right now. I really want to just, I I can't deal with it. I I see you in my mind. I, I, I was so, uh, I was so craving for her, for any, for everything because I it was like an explosion of of sexual energy towards her, like more than 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 the normal. Uh, so you feel it, you know, you feel if someone really likes it or not. But I would also say give it time. 
I always said that I always have this, uh, I always tell people that there's a rule of three in a way. It's like after three parties, you really feel what, if it's right or wrong. And if you feel if you open enough or not, that's usually there's some people it's after the first party, uh, the first party already, you see them like in the middle of like a big uh, um, pile of, of naked people having the best time of their life. But for, for many people, it's uh, after three parties, they would really feel comfortable. So the first party, they were just going to go, um, you know, for a year, uh, see uh, everyone, look at everyone. After the second party, they would already uh, do some uh, exhibitionism here and there. And then the third party, oh my God, that's going to go wild as it, as it can be. So... But, but really conversation, open conversation, be honest about it. And if you really feel that the others really is not into it, just let it go, you know, as much as it's hard um, or give it another try. You know, you never know. You never know. You cannot, you know, first experience don't have to be the most amazing experience, you know, and uh, like everything else in life. So, mm. yeah. How Can I ask this question? How often do you guys have sex? <laughs> um well it really depends yeah it can i feel be. like when we work a lot we don't have much time but yeah. like we just had sex like yeah. right before so that's good um <laughs> really depends sometimes it's like many times in the week sometimes we have like a week of none because we work so much but it really like whenever we have like the you know but time I, and like a relaxation i feel like that yeah then we <laughs> and obviously we have a baby so alina was when alina was, alina was pregnant and she was breastfeeding for a very long time for mm. two and a half years i i totally understand and it's again it's it's communication and understanding and um and honestly you really don't need it uh, if you if you if you kind of like you feel your partner you don't really need it you know as much as i mean for me i just want like i said everyone wants just love hug, kiss, attention, yeah. whatever comes behind it, like the sex and everything. That's, that's just an extra yeah, so we, thing. We don't have sex like all day, every day. That's like my people might think because we have the sex couples. So we are fucking like crazy all the time. <laughs> so no, that's not how it is. So we, yeah. we, we do have sex, but like, it's just not every day. And but I can day. find her one time in the, like we, 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 we do everything together. So we are a schedule is like, daily every second together we're 24 7 together mm -hmm. uh, a few weeks ago she left to spain for a private uh, kinky rabbit party that was four days that we were not together we almost died we we can't be uh, so i can i can i can i can see her at the at the shower and she always like every time i see alina i'm getting uh, i want to have sex with her it's like uh, it's like <laughs> it's like crazy and everyone always tell me like you asked before how you not get tempted so much and there's so many beautiful young ladies out there. But still, when I see Alina, I'm like losing my mind. And this is pure love. I, I feel that when you love someone, no matter what uh, uh, temptation you're going to have in front of you, nothing will, you know, it's kind of like, you know, for her, I would, uh, my, my body also tells me that, you know, it's like my, yeah, my, my cock tells me that it's really true. It tells you who you love and who, and who is just for fun. You mm. just need to listen to it. Yeah. Mm. What is it about her that's different from all the other experiences in the women that you've had before? Um, it's just we're so connected. It's like the connection that we have mm -hmm. is so profound. I, Even like sexual, I feel like sometimes I feel he he can just be like inside of me. He don't have to move. It's just like the the feeling of he him being like on me or in me. Yeah, it's, it's just, just, like just a, <laughs> yeah. it, it's it's just the energy that we mm. like. I said from the first day that we 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 knew each other before we went on a date, but. The first moment when that we went to her, her place and we had sex, we usually just felt it right away. When we kissed, actually, when we kissed at the at the strip club, I felt it right away. I knew it. I just knew it. It just felt so real, so true, you know, so authentic. And obviously, you know, we did have our rough times, like everyone else. You know, we everyone have rough times. It's a relationship. I always tell everyone, it's like a it's like a business. It's like everything else. You have to put a lot of attention into it. It took us many years to of of good and bad and everything to go through a lot of stuff until I we did, I don't think that we have really bad. Like we never really had bad bad. No, but it's still a work. You need to learn how to mm. you need to know the person. You know, it's it, it's uh it, everyone is so different in their uh, reality and their point of view. But with her, I feel that, uh, that we don't need to say anything and we just know, 
Uh, and the trust, I, I feel like I don't, I, because I had relationships before and like, there was always this feel of, I'm not sure if I can trust this person. So I feel like with him, I, I, it just feels right. I feel like I can trust him. I'm not sure like why, but it's just, that's how it is. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So yeah, we should just. Yeah. I had amazing relationship in the past. Amazing. All Most of my relationship were amazing. I'm still in touch with all my ex-girlfriends, even Alina. So my ex-girlfriend last uh, recently, and we are in amazing relationship, but, but with Alina, it's like, uh, like I said, I can be uh, myself. And that's the most important thing. I don't need to be someone who I'm not. Yeah. And and I let her be wherever she wants to be. And she let me be wherever I want to be. So we don't force on each other our own uh, point of view, which I think this is the main problem with other couples, that they always want the other to be what they want them to be, mm. which is not right. It's not true. That's why I, I always tell everyone this, this, I don't really believe that there's something like that. It's called true love, like 100% love, unless it's your kids. Because you always want the other to be what you see the reality is. So, but with us, it's very close to it. You know, it's like 99%. You know, there's always 1%. Why do you love me 100%? I don't know. I do. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have to tell you both, I am uh, so inspired by your love and your story mm-hmm. and the way that you are with each other. I'm always looking out in the world for who are the relationship role models and where can people go mm-hmm. to see Love Lived. And I'm so honored to have you share your story and your experience. And I remember years ago at um, a a gathering with the quote unquote conscious community in Ojai. And there was a couple couples who had, I was sharing about, you know, my work began in 2014 to 2016. I was running a curated dating experience in New York city and eventually brought it out to LA and we had 1200 people come through and, And so I was telling this group of people of the work that I did, and they said, can you do experiences for couples to find unicorns? Mm -hmm. And I was, you know, at the time I hadn't heard of the term unicorns Mm -hmm. and I became um, really curious about that concept. And I went on that app field Mm -hmm. field, Mm -hmm. and thinking like being a single woman, I was curious to be, what would it be like to date a couple? And the reason that I re- I wanted that experience was to see love lived. I wanted to eradicate mm-hmm. any jealousy that I felt inside of me and to be in the essence of another couple that was strong in their foundation and that mm-hmm. I could be of witness to it um, and also see how they were with me, uh, that that's what piqued my own curiosity. And I imagine too of that experience of a single woman coming into a kinky rabbit. We hear that a lot. Yeah, we hear that a lot. The same exact thing what you just said, we hear that a lot because you want to feel, you want to believe that there's something out there that is really uh, pure and love and and so on. So if you connect with other couples that love each other so much, you kind of like attract it. And you, you know, you, 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 you see that there's other, that there is a truth to that. There's actually people who actually love and you can find yourself love. Yeah. I'm not sure if from, if from field, you can find a lot of love, but, but, uh, or in our parties, but, um, we did had a few here and there that, you know, found love. But like I said, there's so many single ladies, that are craving mm-hmm. for an open-minded guy mm-hmm. that will let them be free sexually. And it's so hard for them to find. And um, that's and another reason why we like creating like another, um, we a like social a, networking yeah. kind of type of thing. It's not a dating site. We really don't want to be a dating so site but to connect. Yeah. On uh, the website. Only for obviously our approved. So we do it manually. So we don't let anyone go. We don't, we, you know, because we don't want all those catfishes and all those ones uh, like the other apps have. So it's really very, very exclusive. And, and that's from the reason that a lot of couples wants to find unicorns. A lot of uh, single ladies wants to find couples or even single guys um, that, um, you know, that share the same interest. So, so we are, we are about, I think like about a month, or even less than a month, we're going to start rolling um, the first uh, beta. Uh, but again, it's only for our um, community people. Uh, so only people who got approved because we want to keep it very clean and um, no, you know, no other 
bullshit stuff, but it's mostly for connections, not to swipe. We're, we're not into swiping people. That doesn't make any sense for, for us. We just don't, I don't, I don't feel that people There's should be There's also going to be single guys on it though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To find like a connection for, you know. And, and I, I also too want to, you know, when we, when you say that there are women seeking open-minded men mm -hmm. to, in my words, I think like ignite a, their sexual journey or a, like that they can uh, navigate and explore sexuality together. Mm -hmm. It's not necessarily, I think some men can hear that and be like, oh, that sounds scary. She sounds like a slut. Like, I don't I mean, want, I don't so want true. that. But, but not it's the so true, guys you know? that know about because they're looking for something like we yeah, have that they can yeah. connect and then go to those events together. Yes. So, I mean, I can tell you that I have a very close friend. She's a single girl. She's dying to get a relationship. She met this guy and she still didn't tell them about her life. And I was like, why you don't tell him? She said, because I'm afraid his reaction. So I, I was like, that's actually the best thing that will ever happen to you because you know if it fits you or not. Yeah. So just be open and, and not be don't be afraid of it. The opposite that will that will actually uh, save you a lot of wasting time with someone that you're gonna live in a lie again uh, with yourself. Um, and she's she's a very smart human being who just want to enjoy sexual life like exactly like other men do. I mean, what's the difference if a men's like to if a men like to enjoy uh, sexual life? Why women cannot be? But that's mm -hmm. our society is that society is so close minded that they don't. They, they see it very weird that how a woman can allow herself to be with multiple men. And, and I was like, what do you mean? I mean, <laughs> and they just don't get it. But th that's one thing that I'm very eager to help other guys to just open their mind, um, you know, with sexuality and, and to make them understand that there's so much out there and they can benefit from it, from it. I mean, you have to give in order to get, that's the number one rule. If you want to have an amazing sexual life with other partners, which 99% of them of the men would would want it even if they would say no mm -hmm. you have to give you have to let her do whatever she wants to do it's not fair that only one side would do whatever you want so yeah so if they if you have any single guys that wants to me to slap them in the face uh, you know <laughs> uh, virtually and explain them how they can benefit from it they can contact me anytime uh, I'm, I'm very open to to educate uh, <laughs> the men out there that there's so many amazing amazing women that would give them so much love and they don't need to be afraid if they like to have threesomes or foursomes there's nothing wrong about it everyone's having sex even we had sex, even our parents had sex when, you know, before we were born. It's the number one, th it's the, I think it's the number one thing that everyone's doing. There's mm. everyone in the world having sex. Every animal, every, every, even plant has having, in a way, sex. Mm. So, so it's nothing to be fearful. For how long has Kinky Rabbit been in existence? Six years? Over six years, yeah. Mm. Over six years. So, you know, little confession. Uh, as I was scheduled this podcast, I had somebody come to me and, and say, uh, oh, no, don't like that's I'll, I'll, I'll show you other groups that have safer uh, experiences, uh -huh. not them. We don't trust them. And mm. I'm so glad that's why I, I just shared of being in all of your relationship. And I'm so glad I, I didn't cancel or did not take their advice and cancel this. Mm -hmm. And I went through the have this conversation with you. And I heard you say a little bit ago of um, this transition. I imagine over a six year period of time, each of us are always in our own journeys and learning and growing and evolving. And I imagine through the six years that Kinky Bunny has been in existence and the work that you've been doing in, in the world from even getting into the scene, I guess, 11 years ago, there must be so much that your own journey has awakened you to in the process. Yes. Can you so speak sad. a little bit about maybe what that transition has been and why somebody may have had a opinion or where those opinions may have come from before in the past? I would First say of all, I was saying like was this someone we didn't accept um, that, <laughs> it's <laughs> that either someone that? we don't yeah, it's, uh, this so the, obviously there's a lot of people who don't get accepted and they get upset at us obviously I, I totally get it I think um 
a lot of it comes into mind of a lot of things that happened recently, not with our club, but with other clubs that Alina was part of in the past. Yeah. And, um, but that's, we created Kinky Rabbit to, to do things differently than other clubs. And mm, I mean, we, we always been on the same path since the beginning, uh, always the same. We had the same values, uh, until today. So it's, it's can be from jealousy. You know, people are always jealous. It's okay. It's, I, I don't, I don't have any, uh, hard feeling on any, anyone. And, uh, it's, it doesn't, but we, but we do live in a, in a, we do have a community that don't accept everyone, which I totally understand. Or there are some people that we kicked out because they don't fit, which is okay. You know, it's like, like I said, there's no hard feeling. It's the same as I wouldn't fit to other club out there, which is okay. You know? Mm-hmm. So, um, th- we, we evolve, evolve personally. I mean, I think that with our uh, openness to a lot of other things, not only uh, sexuals, so like any, any other thing, if it's psychedelics, if it's, uh, um, um, connecting with other people that was at the beginning was very hard for us because we moved from a different country, you know, like a different culture. Um, so yeah, a bit other than that, you know, we, we stayed, we always stayed true to ourselves. We never changed in that matter. We always uh, have the same. We, we go from the same for the same values since day one. But I do think that, like I said, most of it, it's because uh, Alina, Alina was creating a different club that recently was, I don't want to say much about it because it's really not a, my business, but um, that that made kind of like made pe- a lot of people from our community very upset because yeah like, because they were talking about who was in the club and like things like that which is not right this is number one of our rules like we would never talk about who's coming to our class because we are all about the safety for um, our guests and yeah we want them to feel yeah. more safe. Yeah. Mm. So I know we're running out of time, but last question: What is the future for Kinky Rabbit? Hmm. Wow. So many things. Um, the main, I mean, our main goal is to create this, um, social, um, platform. Uh, social platform to connect, to have people connect with one another. And, um, Alina is working on, um, on a TV series that, uh, an erotic TV series, not on Kinky Rabbit Club, but an erotic TV series that will break the, all the, um, you know, people have this notion that uh, sex clubs and these are so horrible or or sacrificing other people and all those weird things that I see online that are that are obviously not true. Uh, so she wants to break this barrier and, and and show the world that there is for every everything in life there is there's two things there's balance in everything there's bad things and there's good things there's beautiful things there's uh, ugly things also to uh, in our um world there's you know clubs or anything that are not as amazing and there's other things that are very uh, high level very cu- highly curated and beautiful uh, coming from you know uh, from the right uh, mind and uh, connecting other people and so on um, other than that, what else we do? Uh, we are going to come up with a, a, a toy line for couples mostly. And, um, Pinky hotel that's the way in the, that's, yeah, that's our, hotel. that's our biggest thing that we want to say. We want to create this hotel that not going to be f- uh, obviously f- all the time fully sexual, but f- to have couples that are open-minded and fun and, and just want having to- a place where they can always go and meet like-minded people. Yeah. So. Which is great, you know. They have a drink, and then if they connect, they can go to the room. With yeah, them. <laughs> I just just be around amazing people. That's about it. Mm. I love it. I love it. Thank you guys for joining me on this for this conversation. Is there anything Thank else you. that you'd like to share before we wrap this show? Anything that the listeners you'd like them to hear? I don't know. If someone wants to come and explore, like just apply, see if it's for you, just, you know, you can just come and enjoy a show and like a drink with someone. You don't really have to like do anything, I would say. Yeah, just, you know, come and see for yourself. <laughs> Look, everyone, you got an invitation. You can go to kinkyrabbit.com <laughs> and you can fill out the application. And if you're approved, just go have a drink and explore a whole new world out there. Exactly. Yeah. Don't be afraid of anything. Mm. 
Thank you guys. You guys are so lovely. It was really appreciate this time. And thank you everybody for listening to another episode of Deep End with Christina. Again, if you do enjoy this podcast, please do like, subscribe, rate, give it five stars. It helps more people find it and helps me continue to host it. And definitely go check out wedeepend.com to see all the upcoming social and transformational experiences because why I love sharing with you virtually, what I love even more is being with you in real life. Okay. Bye for now.